Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the Savage TPH reboot. This is our Savage Trophy Predator Hunter in 243. And as you guys can tell on the bench here, it definitely looks a little bit different. Ended up going with an XLR Evolution chassis and a Athlon Ares four and a half 27 scope. We're gonna shoot the same five loads, factory loads that we did in part one and see what kind of uh, improvements, if any, we get or if we don't get any improvements at all. But uh, this is gonna be a pretty interesting test, I think, to kind of judge whether or not, you know, maybe something like this is actually worth the price point. But uh, I think overall, this is probably gonna see a lot more uh, usability whenever a custom load gets worked up for it. But uh, overall, this will be a good initial test to kind of see. And uh, after that, we'll go and uh, I'll grab the camera, get some close-ups of the rifle and let you guys see it. And we'll talk about the, the scope and we'll go down and check out the group. So let's get started here. First, we're going to start with our 58 grain Hornady Superformance. Remember from last time, this is the stuff that's uh, cooking pretty good. This stuff's at almost 4,000 feet per second, so it is most definitely haul in the mail, fellas. So, again, same 110 yards, three shots. Let's see here. I have to say, I really love this stock. It feels absolutely awesome when you get it on your cheek. All right. Okay, like I said, that was the 58 grain stuff. We're gonna move to this 100 grain PowerPoint Winchester. Granted, I know guys, this isn't a, you know, a load that you would shoot in a rifle like this, but uh, it most definitely gives a, uh, you know, a data point as far as cheap ammo goes. And a lot of guys use this for hunting. Um, this rifle overall is around 11 and a half pounds as you see it. So it's probably not something you're gonna be toting around in a, uh, in a uh, woods or a, a hunting application i guess unless you're you're posted up somewhere maybe in a blind or something like that then yeah i guess you could but uh, um, overall this is probably something that's going to be geared more towards tactical style shooting or prs style matches things of that nature but let's see what this stuff will do Not bad, not bad. Not for hunting load anyway. All right, let's try three of the, the 95 grain AccuTips from Remington. As I mentioned in the, in the previous video, fellas, you know, the Savage uses a one and 9.25 twist. Generally that, you know, that doesn't really lend to stabilizing the heavier stuff like the 95 grain or the 100 grain stuff. But you know, every rifle's different. Your results may vary. I've had them to where they'll shoot it fairly decent, and I've had other savages that absolutely would not. So it really is, you know, a rifle thing. They're like people, they're all different.
Ja. All right, now let's try that that browning 65 grain. This is that uh, BXV stuff, their varmint load. Again, like I said, this is a 65 grain polymer tip. I've had really good luck out of this stuff, and a lot of the other 243s have liked it really well. So let's see what this can do here. This stuff's moving fairly quick also, as we mentioned before. Not fast as that superformance stuff. That stuff's just ridiculous, but let's see here. 110 yards. Now we're going to finish off with this uh, <clears throat> Federal Fusion stuff, 95 grain. This is, you know, this is more of a hunting load, but uh, we'll try it and see what happens, fellas. It definitely seems to favor, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, lighter grain stuff so far. So let's see what this will do here. All right. All right, let me grab the camera, fellas, and we'll get some close-ups of the rifle here. I have to say, guys, the overall feel of this rig is just amazing. That stock that XLR uses, it is completely modular. So you can adjust it for, you know, your length of pull. You can adjust it for your comb height. You can cant it a little bit, depending on how your face may lay. I mean, it's it's a really well thought out design. You know, there's adjustment screws here to go up and down for this. There's adjustment screws in here. You can actually move the butt pad up and down. And there's adjustment screws here. You can move it forward and back on the buffer tube as well, which is really nice. This grip, that comes with it from the factory, and it places the hand exactly where you need it on this trigger. It is perfect. One thing, as you guys may have noticed, I was kind of finicking, fiddling with this mag. I got one of the Magpul, um, oh, AICS style mags. Uh, feeds great, functions great, but what I have noticed is that it does tend to be a little... Uh, finicky getting into place and locking in as you noticed I probably had um, a couple failures to feed and that's because this mag wasn't fully always seated but I think as we get to using it a little bit more it'll line itself out um, again same barreled action of the TPH nothing's changed there the um, overall weight of the rifle as configured like I said is around 11 and a half pounds now which yeah that's kind of heavy but for the style of shooting I intend on doing with it 
I don't foresee that being a problem. And like I mentioned, I went with the Athlon uh, four and a half to 27, picked that up from Dustin at DNR. Uh, give him a shout guys. He's got all your optics needs covered. Went with a set of uh, Burris XTR rings in a uh, Badger 20 MOA mount. And overall guys, I am absolutely ecstatic with this rifle. It is, it is proven to be very, very great so far. As you can tell, I'm, I'm super stoked, but, uh, let's, uh, walk down and we'll take a look at our target here and see what, uh, see what the damage is. Now, as you guys know, you know, something like that, I mean, that really steps up the, uh, you know, the, the cost in a rig like that, getting those chassis and a scope like that. Those, those aren't cheap upgrades, but you know, if they if the if the rifle shoots better, you know they might be worth it to you. For me, this is going to be my my go-to bolt action, which is why I didn't mind going a little bit more in depth with this one. I think this is the one that uh, probably going to stick with for a while. So decided to go out on a limb with it and see what we could do with a with an XLR chassis. I've always wanted to try one, and so far I wished I'd have done it a long time ago because they feel amazing. But uh, let's take a look here at our target and see what we got. I think results are going to be extremely impressive. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look at that. That's three shots in one hole, fellas. Dang, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that uh, considerably uh, tightened that up. That's that 58 grain superformance. And honestly, fellas, this, this rifle will probably lend itself to, I'd say, probably around the 60 to 70 grain projectile range, which for me, that's going to be fine. For what I'm going to be doing in the distance shooting, a 70 grain Projo is going to be more than enough. But uh, there's that Winchester, you know, eh, nothing too uh, too amazing there. Um, look at that. That's that 65 grain BXV brought that down into a very nice group. And here's that fusion. I pulled that actually. That was my second shot. I think, uh, it'll be on the target cam, but the, I didn't tr press the trigger good enough on that one. But, uh, as you can see the, uh, the chassis setup most definitely tightened those groups up without a doubt. I have to say, you know, when it, when you really start to thinking about cost versus, you know, reward, what are you really looking for? Um, you know, is something like that actually worth it? Eh, we'll see. Um, with results like that, it sure is possible, I tell you that. But, uh, you know, guys, stay tuned. We're going to do a part three. I'm going to do a ladder workup on this rifle with a 70 grain Sierra Match King. That's the uh, projectile I've chosen for this rifle and uh, Varget Powder. Uh, we'll see what it does, see what kind of groups we can get with that, and see if we can get a pet load worked up for it. But um, as always, feel free to like this video and share it as it really does help the channel. Subscribe if you like the content. There's always cool Savage videos and other rifle stuff going on here at the hide. And as always, fellas, shoot straight. Later.